may be seated. I'm going to talk a little bit. I think I'll read from the screen because I'll have my glasses and it's a little bit bigger. Uh, the title is, Let's Get Back to the Norm. Think about that just for a moment. Let's get back to the norm. In Acts, the second chapter, the 42nd through the 47th verse, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had needed. Need. And they continued daily, daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. We see here that where the power of the early church began, and we see the things that God, God was doing in the, in, in the followers' hearts, that they were willing to do whatever it took to get this program, to get God's church moving the way God wanted it to do. And the Spirit of God would move upon, upon the people, and the Bible says that there was folks who was added to the church daily. In other words, there was people that was being born again and accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen? How many is ready to see that same power sweep America once again? Stomach and I went and had it checked, 
and they found a spot on my lung. I know you have shared it with me, but let me, let me talk to you about it again. And, and the doctor told me, he said, well, what we can do, we can go in and take that out and, and they get rid of that, and it probably is cancer. So they started doing all kinds of tests, and for three years, I went through testing. But when I came home that day, I had a little office at the house. I went in that, I went in that office, and I got down on my knees, and I said, God, you said you're my healer. You said you're my deliverer. You said you will take care of me. You will take care of my needs and all things. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I saw God. I weeped, I cried, and I felt the presence of God come upon me and said, don't worry, I got this. Yes, and you know what? It took three years for that spot to go away. But let me tell you something. The same God that moved that spot can move the things out of your life today that is entering you. And we can see the Spirit of God. Ooh, going to be a little different here. Yeah. Huh? It's time to allow God to get the church back to the place she is supposed to be. That's right. Get back to the place that we're we trust him. Yes. We're talking about three little things here. I think three or four. <laughs> four. And I want to talk about first true unity in the body. Unity does not mean conformity. And let me give you the definition of that. It's a behavior in accord with the common attitudes and practice of society. Romans 12 and 2 tells us, I think they have that, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, acceptable and perfect will of God. So it doesn't mean because I'm going to conform to everything that's going around me and all of the things that, that's happening that I'm doing the right thing. No, it means I might be doing the wrong thing. I, I look at this week. I have been just flabbergasted. And, and my heart's been broken just to see the the things that our Congress and our Senate is trying to pass on, on abortion. And so everybody said, don't touch abortion. I'm going to touch it today. I am going to touch it because something is wrong when you can abort a child after, after it is born. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. And some people say, well, it meant this or it meant that. You pass that law, it means you can do it all. Because the law sometimes becomes very wide open. I'm sitting here thinking, where are these people coming from? Then I watched this woman in Virginia that was had a bill she wanted to bring before the state legislator at legislation in, in the Senate. And they began to ask questions. And they began to say, well, are you saying that you can uh, abort a child after that child is born if the parent decides they don't want the child? Maybe the child might have a problem, maybe not. And, and the lady, she tried, to, she tried to get around it. She said, but my question is to you, ma'am, does your bill support that? She said, yes, my bill support that. That's pure out murder in my eyes. And it's not pleasing to God. Because I will take you to a scripture that says, hey, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. That's right. And he knew us. He ordained us. Yes. So when we talk about conformity and beginning to conform to the things of this world, no, that's not good. We just could be, be accepted in the social status. Well, let me tell you what the social status can do. The social status is go this way, but me and Jesus are going to go this way, and we're going to praise God and give Him the glory. It's time that the body of Christ stands up and be the church that God called us to be over 2,000 years ago. Hey, maybe this, maybe this thing just kind of stirred me up a little bit. So please, if I get a little, a little excited, forgive me. It's okay, though. True unity, unity is found when people are able to be who they are, now think about this, and not interested in trying to be someone or something that they are not. Yeah. Whoa, isn't that amazing? Yes. I remember when I first started pastoring, I wanted to preach like this one and that one and that one, and I thought, man, they got it together. You know what the Lord told me? He said, can't you just be satisfied with you? Right. Can't we just be satisfied with who we are? Look at us, we're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just if you if you worry about the mirror, don't look at the mirror, but you're just beautiful. <laughs> God created you. Amen? Amen? So we don't have to be somebody that we're not. Just be who we are. Yes. Yes. Because God's got, man, I, I mean, I've been really been talking to God about this. And I've been saying, Lord, what has happened? I remember a country that when I was growing up, it was okay to talk about Jesus. It was okay to say Merry Christmas. It was okay to do these things that we do. But the 
today, you've got to be so correct in saying anything or you're considered a racist. Let me tell you something. I'm not a racist. I'm a man that's in love with Jesus Christ. And I will not hesitate to say that the Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Yes. How about you? Yes. Yes. All these terms that are being used today just so that people will conform. Right. Or so people can be more like them. No, we've got to be satisfied with who we are in Christ. Amen? Yeah. True unity means that we're able to share the burdens of one another and care for those in needs. And what does that actually mean? It means that I've got to share your burdens. And you share it for mine. And anything that I can do within my power to help you take care of those needs, I'm going to do that. In the early church, what they did, and they used it as an example, so they just they sold everything they had. They just put it in one pot, and, and they delivered it. Well, I've heard people say today, that's what we need to do. That's not actually what it's talking about. But somebody would say, well, if everybody would just put everything in the pot, I could get more. See, that's the attitude that people have. Yeah. What God was saying is, be willing to give up yourself. Come on. Be willing to give what you have to help take care of that burden and that need. They were to meet people. And the early church showed us how that should be done. To be there for others. That's what unity is. True unity is when one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one hurts, well, we all hurt because we can feel the pain of our brothers and sisters. I remember in our early years of pastoring, it was a, a very challenging time for us. I came out of, we came out of our home and shut business down and went into a place that paid us $300, I think, our first month. If it was that much, I'm not sure. We went, had to go rent our own house up in Ocala and and uh, we, we were there for a year. God blessed us. I think we, we'd go to a brand new building there, which we never got to pastor in. I've shared that with you. But I thought about that first year a lot that I stepped out, and I'm going to call that blind faith in a sense of saying that I just totally trusted God in everything I was doing. Not knowing what we were going to do with our home. Knowing that we just shut everything down that, we, that, that supported us, that took care of us, and we just stepped out. And you know what, when I stepped out, I, I remember calling the overseer back and I said, I know you pointed me here, and, and it, it, was a, it was a nasty building we went into. Had no, no uh, facilities for bathrooms or anything like that. Had holes in the wall. Had no air conditioning. Your doors were wide open. What came in was okay, I guess. The heater was a wood stove. Wasn't it a wood stove or kerosene? I can't remember. Oh. But anyway, in that year, God turned our lives around like they've never been turned before. And God just began to bless. When we started building that new church, we, we had it built. Two weeks later, they moved in after we left. We never got a pastor in it. It had central heat and air. It had windows. It had doors. It had bathrooms. It had everything that it needed. But we never got to receive it. And I thought, hmm, I worked pretty hard for nothing. You know what the Lord spoke to me? And he said, You've done exactly what I wanted to do. Sometimes some of us think we do everything and nobody else is doing anything, but you're doing exactly, come on, stay with me, what God wants you to do. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And throughout the years, God has blessed you and I richly. And you know what? One thing that I, I, I thank God for so much, how he's blessed my family, yes. how my family all still comes to church. And we praise God together. How God has touched not only my siblings, but also other people that we have come in touch with because of our ministry. God is a good God. Amen? Amen. I, I might not understand what He's doing, but I do know that if I will do what He tells me to do, there will, everything will be fine. True unity is that we don't want to compete to see who's the best. Or... or let me read that again. True unity is that we don't want to compete to see who has the best, this or best that. We are only concerned and focused on the kingdom of God and its growth. That's what we're focused on, is the kingdom of God and its growth. I remember when we was at that church up in Ocala, 10, miles, 10, 10 or 15 miles away, they had a real nice facility. They had air conditioning. They had bathrooms. They had windows, and we didn't. And once in a while, I thought, well, why, why are we having a church here that's that close, that close to another church that has everything we need and we don't have? And the Lord spoke to me and said, quit looking at that. Quit, 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 get your eyes off of that. You, 
You get your eyes on me and watch what I'll do for you. In the early church, that's what they did. They quit looking about what everybody else had and what was going on here. Their eyes got focused on Jesus. How many is ready to focus your eyes on Jesus this morning? And let him begin to bless you. Come on, folks, it's real. So let's take this a little bit apart. True unity doesn't look at social or economic status. True unity does not look at race, ethnicity, or gender. You know what it looks at? It looks at who we are worshiping Him. You see, you know why we get along so good here? Because we love each other. Amen. We right. care for each other. And I'm sure when you meet a time when people step out of the way to help other people and to do things for other people. So when we talk about let's get back to the norm, we need to get back to the norm. Amen? Amen. And worship and praising God and giving Him the glory. And I know some of you are back to the norm. Amen? Amen. I welcome here. Sincere praising among God's people. Oh, this is another one. Sincere praise come out of the heart that is at the awe of God. Now listen, when you truly catch a glimpse of who He is, now let me say that again. When you truly catch a glimpse of who He is, you can't help but to praise Him. Wow. Yeah. Think about it. Now, let me say this to you. Everybody prays in a different way. That's right. Everybody glorify God in a different way. Amen? Yeah. But when you catch a glimpse of Him and His goodness and how good He's been to you and how He's blessed you, you can't help but to praise Him. Amen? Amen? I wake up every morning praising Him. I go to bed at night praising Him. And during throughout the day, I will praise Him. Why? Because He's my Lord and Savior. I got a glimpse of Him. I know who He is. And I know He lives in here. How many of you say He lives in here today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, quiet. <laughs> Look, I know the Super Bowl game's coming, but give me a Super Bowl yell. He lives in here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You see how it works? <laughs> in here. Body praise in church. Oh, I think and this doesn't apply to us. The modern phrase in church has become about the method and style more than the purpose. Do we look right? Are we doing it right? God, or is it going to get me in trouble? God isn't impressed with the content. Mm. God is looking for the intent. God's not worried about the content, but he won't know what the intent is. Are you intent on worshiping Him or are you intent and in, in let somebody see how good you can worship? Oh, that's wrong. I still think we've got to get back to the norm. Not the traditions of old, but the norm just where we allow the Spirit of God to move us and just to touch us and to bless us. Amen? Amen. Now, it, 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 we don't go to any other churches. Every now and then we'll go somewhere and, and maybe... Uh, to a concert or something, but it's been a long time, but I am told it what I do see. Sometimes you go to a place of praise and worship, and, and sometimes it looks like it's more a competition for an audition for a music contract. Hmm, that's wrong. But then some you go into some other places and you get a song service that's just filling the time slot with absolutely no life or praise at all. That's not what God wants. God wants us to come together and everything we do is give Him praise. Amen. Give Him praise. Can somebody praise Him right now just where you sit and give Him the glory and the honor He deserves in this house right now, right for a moment of time and take time and praise Him and worship Him right at this moment? If we can begin to do that, we will praise Him everywhere we go. Now listen, don't get me wrong, I love good music. And I love to worship the Lord. And I love hearing good music. People that's in time, people that can sing. That's the reason they don't let me sing at all, because I can't sing. I try, I always audition and she left the house and she says no. I don't ask her to be part of it. She just told me to quit. I write long words to my songs. I sing it the way I want it to be. I remember we, when we started dating, I used to sing a song to her that Jer, no, not Jeremiah, Staggerly stood on the corner. I can't remember how it even goes now. She said, that's not a song. But one day I showed her the song. I didn't get it right, but it was a song. I put my own, my own everything into it. I mean, remember that song by Stagger Lee. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. I know. I said, there's a <laughs> yeah, song. I don't remember how it goes. I don't know if we need to let it know how it goes.
fish have. Oh. It happens, folks. At this age, it happens. Yes. Yes. Mom called me the other night. He had four things he wanted to tell me. He forgot every one of them before he got to tell me. It just happened. God himself, listen, God himself is stirred by true praise. And he promised to inhabit the praise of his people. Now watch this. Now think about this. To inhabit means he wants to dwell and not just visit. So let me, let me take you back there again. God himself is stirred by true praise. And he promised to inhabit the praise of his people. To inhabit means he wants to dwell and not just visit. In other words, he's moving in to stay. Amen? Amen. He's moving in to stay. As long as you're praising him and, and doing what you're supposed to, he's going to live right inside of you. And he wants to glorify you, and to lift you up if you're glorifying him. God is looking for someone to fill his house with a sincere heart and attitude of praise so he can feel welcome to dwell in that place. Somebody said, why is church so important? Let's talk about church just for a moment. Church is important because we come together. Not only to praise him, but to lift each other up. And as we're lifting each other up, and when we leave this place, and if we praise God and give him the glory with, with a true heart, not, not with just, just to look good, but with the, with the intent of praising and worship to him and watching him work in our life. When we go through this week of the trials and the tribulations of life, when life begins to try to take us over, God can step in and help us get through it. Amen? Because he's with us. He goes with us. As long as we continue to praise him. So church is important that we come together, that we uplift each one, that we help each one, that we guide each one. Some, sometimes during the week, somebody will call me that just needs one word. It seems like every week, somebody will call that just needs something from me to help them. And sometimes I'll call somebody just to get a word to help me to get through. How many know we need each other? Yes. Come on. We need each other yes. so we can lift each other up. Yes. That's what church is. It's a family, folks. It's the family of God that when we come together, the early church did that. It showed us by example of how we come together. How we come together and, and, and meet those needs and the power of God move during those period of times. Somebody said that the healing was for that, for that time and that time only. Well, I, I don't think so. Jesus said, I'm the same today as he was yesterday. And he'll be the same tomorrow. Jesus never leaves us. His spirit never changes. If God wants to touch somebody and heal them, they can be healed by the power of God. Amen? Amen. And I've seen miraculous healings, and I've seen some healings that I have prayed and prayed for. And I didn't see it happen on this earth, but I knew as soon as they left this earth, they were healed in the power of God. Amen? God will do what he promised us to do. So let's look at the last part. Salvation and growth of the body. The intent of the gospel and the purpose of the Spirit is not solely for the benefit of the body, it's so that we can be built up. It's just not for the body, but so we can be built up. How many is ready to be built up a little bit? That's what I want. That's what I want the Spirit to do, is build me up, to help me, to, to make me feel that I can accomplish anything through Christ. Amen? How many knows we can accomplish anything as long as Christ is in it? As long as His will that we get it done. Do it. Amen? When she and I stepped out, over 36 years ago, and we went out, oh, my Lord, a long time. I was young. Slim, black hair. I couldn't have got by with this church today, though. It had me coat and tie. And we stepped out, and we went by blind faith, not even knowing how we were going to survive. God just wanted me to be faithful to him. And because I was faithful to him, see what he did, he built me up. He gave me more strength to continue to go on. It wasn't just about the body, as pretty as it was back then, Jesus. But it was to build me up, to help me to understand that he has something great in my life. Not just my life, but my family's life. And that's what God wants to do for each and every one of us today. He wants us to, He wants us, He wants to build us up. He don't want to put 
us down. He wanted to lift us up. And the early church, they recognized that. And they allowed the power of God to work in them to be able to build them up. Now, how many is ready to say, let's get back to the norm and let's let the Spirit of God move like He wants to move in our house today? Not just here, but in here. I told you I've been dealing with this one for a while. And, and so, when we're built up, the purpose is for the advancement and the growth of the kingdom of God. Think about that. The growth for the kingdom of God. In other words, if we lift his name up, Jesus said, if, you, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. In other words, he said, if you take time Okay, this is going to get a little touchy right here, so y'all pray for me. I'm coming down. If we get past the point of feeling sorry for ourselves and what we have or we don't have, if we get to the point that we realize it's not about us anyway, it's about building the kingdom of God. Come on. If we get to the point that we put all our stuff to the side, that we put a lot of value in, and begin to lift His name up in our lives, well, come on, let me tell you something. All the things we put stock in and so valuable to us, God might even multiply that. God might do this. God will meet the needs in our lives, whatever we have. But first of all, we've got to learn how to lift Him up. When the early church, they sold all their stuff and did all that stuff and they came together, they knew that there was a greater results at the end than it was at the beginning. And Jesus said he's going to do more at the end than he did the beginning. Well, folks, we're getting at the end right now. And I'm ready for the power and the blessings of God to move in our lives and to touch our lives and to heal folks. Watch God begin to do something. So when I begin to see this, I begin to think. Now, I'm guilty sometimes. Because my pain level of tolerance sometimes, she says it's low. I don't know if it is or not. Maybe I just want her attention. I, I don't know. No. Sometimes I get up in the morning and I'm sad. If this is what 66 is all about, I'm not sure. And I, I mean, you ever got to pity party? Y'all know what I mean by pity party? It's like, I can't hit the ball as far as Larry can on the golf course, and Frankie knows that. So he gets in a pity party, and he steps the off and messing with him. But it's like that we get so caught up in, in the circumstances that surround us that we can't see what God wants us, and that's where we live. That's right. The early church realized, okay, Jesus died on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us. Now think about this. Think what we just for a moment. He gave his all for us. Don't that tell you enough? He will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. No matter what we're going through, and I'm telling you, I'm not be loving aches and pains because aches and pains hurt. And when you're sick, you just don't feel good. But I've learned to praise God in my sickness and my aches and my pains and everything else. And I want to tell you something. I feel good. Now, I didn't cry the other night. Friday night, my knee hurt so bad. It really did. And I, I know some of these guys give me static about it. I don't even know what's going on with it. They said, nothing is there. So, whatever it is. But it hurt so bad that I wouldn't tell Sheila. Because she was getting on to me. Because I'm supposed to play golf tomorrow. And I'm going to play golf tomorrow. I'm going to play with it. I had played in six months, I think. But anyway, I laid in that bed that night. And I said, God, I need your help. I said, I'm tired of this need controlling me. I'm tired of waking up every morning with this pain. I'm tired of this, and I'm tired of that. And I said, Lord, you said where one or two is gathered together, touching the grid, well, the Holy Spirit is with me. We're the one and two, and we're touching, and we're grid today. I got up yesterday morning. Now, I got smart. I put, I put a brace on my knee. I didn't feel the first pain almost all day long. You know why? I got hold of the man that can make the difference in my life. Amen? Now, you say, well, are you painted today? Yeah, I have a little bit. The God's got it. I'm going to quit crying about it. It's just going to be what it is. I'm going to say, God, it is yours. You are it, not me. But if you said you take it away from me, I'm trusting him. And you might say, well, preacher, that's a need. What about something more serious? Well, I understand. I understand things more serious sometimes. It sends us for loops, but we've got to trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Then the last thing I want to talk about, and I'll hurry up here, the manifestation of the Spirit. 
Spirit. Signs and wonders and miracles are part of the kingdom today, just as much as they were in biblical times. Someone asked, why don't we see miracles like we used to here in America? And I think the reason is in our society and in our churches, God's power just, is just one of the many options. If we want it, it's there. If we don't want it, well. But we need to get to the place where God is a necessity. Where God is the most important person in our lives. We will see the miracles. We will see the healings. We'll see the blinded eyes open. We'll see things that, that happens. I've seen a lot of miracles in my life. I've seen a lot of healings in my life. Right here in this church. Right where Danny is sitting at. There's a lady that was being taken in. Preparing for open heart surgery. God touched her on a Sunday night right there. She laid out in the spirit. The next morning, she and I and her and her husband went, went to the hospital. And they began to run tests on her. And came back and said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your heart. They said, we're going to put a monitor on you for a week, but there is nothing wrong with your heart. You know what happened? God came on the scene. God touched her. God healed her. Amen? Amen. God healed her. And, and, and Joyce Armada, I remember when Joyce had her massive heart attack, and it was a massive heart attack. We did not expect her to make it. Matter of fact, James and I was told that she was not going to make it. They couldn't even unclog the vein because the vein in, are you okay with me? I, I kind of, okay. The vein inside was, was ripped on the top part, so every time they tried to unclog it, it just clogged, it just clogged it up. It, it just wouldn't work. And I remember when the doctor came out, we're going to try one more time. We both were just kind of dumbfounded that we prayed. We saw God. I remember going to the hospital, Joyce laying on the bed, and I think they kept her in an induced coma for, I don't know, it seemed like forever. Weeks, and, and how they had to turn her and do this here. And, and I'll tell you what, the prognosis was not good. But this church prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and she's here today, still praising God, and giving the gift of glory. Amen? Listen, my God's people can heal today. You might not have taken it all the way, but she is alive today. A young man standing right there behind you that had some had surgery on his brain, Billy. They did not give him much time to live, but he's still here today. He's married. He's got a child. God is still touching him today. The same God that can do that healing is still going to heal him today. And there's so many more of you. I just might need permission to speak, but, but I'll leave it there. But what I'm trying to say to you is, he's still doing miracle work today. He's still the same God. Amen. Psalms 103, 2 and 3 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and, for, and, for, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives you all your sins and heal all your diseases. Not just some, but all. If sin and sickness and death was part of God's will and ultimate plan, he would have never sent his son to die on the cross as an act of all-out war against these things. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he did it all, folks. He did it all for us. It is God's intention that his people walk in and enjoy the full blessings of his kingdom. Of his kingdom. In other words, it's okay to be blessed. Somebody say, it's okay to be blessed. Okay. Say it with me again. It's okay to be blessed. Okay. See, God desires for His Spirit upon all flesh and bring life, joy, peace, hope, and healing. So for you today, as y'all get ready to come, come on. For us today, there is dealing and facing some critical things in our lives. God is willing to help us to get through. God will help us. But it takes total Surrender to Him. Now, do you, I hope you understand what I mean, total surrender to Him. It means that everything I am, everything I have, and everything I think I will ever have belongs to God. You know what God does? He trusts me with it. He trusts me with this pulpit. That is an honorable, humble place to be. He trusts me to speak His word. He put the trust in me, and he put the know-how, and, and, and he gave me my ability to do it. And I follow that ability the best that I can. He trusts some of you with teaching, 
Some of you are just praying for people. He trusted you with that. What God has trusted you with, the talents that He's given you, use it for His glory. And watch Him, watch us begin to lift Him up. Because I do believe this. There's an awakening that's coming. There is going to be a strong awakening that's going to take place in this great country we live in. I believe that the power of God, and I think it's already happening, some of us might not even see it, but the power of God is beginning to move. I believe He's going to begin to touch people. But I do believe that we are at the end time, and I believe that Jesus is not far from coming. And look, He can come tomorrow as far as I care. I'm ready to fly. How many is ready to fly today? If the Lord comes, I got my ticket. I got my ticket. I found it in the Word of God. If you read this Word and apply this Word to your life and accept Christ, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, when that day comes, you're going to fly. Amen? Amen. Amen. We just live in a time. It seems like sin is just getting worse and getting worse. And there's many scriptures that we can talk about on that issue of abortion that seems to be prominent right now. I'm not understanding why they're fighting that like they're fighting. It's crazy. It makes absolutely no sense to me. I was a preacher when I was born. Back in that time, if it was this time, my mother would have the option to abort me. I lived in the hospital for the first year of my life. I fell out of crib and fractured my skull while I was in the hospital. That might tell y'all something. But my mom gave me the right to live. And I'm going to say something, and this bothers me, and it bothers me a lot. So I'll get off my chest and I'll be done with it. All these people that's trying to make a decision in full term short term, whatever they want to call it, abortion. To me, it's murder. That's the way I look at it. Don't forgive me if I can. If you see it differently, that's okay. But I want you to think about something. Their mother, listen to this, their mother gave them the right to live to be able to make decisions. Don't you think every child has the right to live? To yeah. To make decisions? So have we, have we stepped away, and look, I understand abortion has affected many families, please. I'm not, I'm not being like that. I understand that. I understand it. It's in our family. And I understand that. I remember my sister aborted her child. This is stepsister. I remember they came to Shego and I don't know if we had money to help them. I said, oh no, we're trying to have a child. We're not going to pay for that. But after she aborted that child, let me tell you something. She went through peer, I'll leave it there knowing that what she did was wrong. And she dealt with it. It wasn't that somebody came to her biblically and did this or did that, but that instinct in her life. And I remember her making one decision. She said, my mother let me live. I didn't let my child. Folks, we're living in a world today that is trying to talk us into conforming to what this world is. I'm not going to conform to this world, but I am going to to, I am one to transform and do what Jesus wants me to do. Amen? And I think it's time that we begin to stand up and be the church that the early church talked about. Because it's the same spirit. It's the same God. Come on. It's, we're fighting the same devil. Come on. And, but the scripture tells me, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And God is much greater in me than what the devil is in this world. Amen? And I don't mind standing up to him and letting him know, I love my Lord with all my heart and all of my soul. Three years ago, I got, I got to quit. Three years ago, I got to finish this though. We were getting letters in the mail that as a church, we cannot talk about this and we can't talk about this and we can't talk about this and that it's going to become law and, and if you do, you lose your 5013 exemption and you'll have to close your doors. And I, we got hit with all that stuff. My mind was made up. If that happened, I stepped down because I cannot, if I can't preach what thus saith the word of God, then I can't preach. But God did something. All that has changed and the, the door has opened back up. But yet it seems like there is a mighty move in this country to quiet down the Christians. But isn't it time that the Christians get loud again and say God is still God and he is still on the throne and he is still my Lord and he is still I'm 
open our eyes and see what's going on all around us. Because most people don't. They hear a little bit here and hear a little bit there. They don't see what is happening. But I want to tell you, open your eyes. The devil's on the warpath. But I can tell you one thing. Jesus has got the armor that can knock him flat down. Amen? Amen. If we'll stay hard and keep hold of Jesus, we've got to have it made. Let us stand together, if you will. Lord, prepare.